Welcome back, or not welcome back. It's the beginning of a new show, but welcome to Peace, Love, Liberty Radio online at fppradio.com. And I've got a rare treat today. I actually have an in-studio guest to kick off the show. Uh, He's not going to be in for the entire first hour, unless he wants to be. Robert Mathias, who is a new mover to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. And if you're not aware, the Free State Project is a move to get 20,000 Liberty Lovers to come to one place. And that one place is New Hampshire. And Robert, you have actually been here less than 24 hours. Is that correct? I'm coming up on 24 hours. Uh... In an hour. Speak directly so, into the microphone. so the I'm coming up on uh, 24 hours and one hour from now. One hour from now. Yes. And you actually, you told me earlier that you sold everything you had except for the cat and some clothes and got on an airplane in Chicago and flew into Manchester. Yes, it's actually kind of crazy. Everything has completely fallen in place for me. I know I'm not the... Uh, you know, the normal free stater that tries to move in, they have a lot of struggles. Um, about a month ago, I requested for a transfer. I got it. The lease of my apartment ran out this month as well, so I'm getting my security deposit back. Um, and I sold everything in the apartment, sold everything. I am just decided to fly out here. And uh, also, one thing that's crazy, everything kind of fell into place. I got an apartment quickly. Already had the job lined up. Bought your car. And, uh, yeah, everything's just fitting in uh, the place perfectly. And speaking of buying the cart, we aren't entirely positive, but we believe that we made history this morning. I think it was history. Uh, possibly the first time that in the state of New Hampshire, someone has purchased a car with Bitcoin. Yes, uh, that was huge. To me, I'm coming in here and all of a sudden, bam, getting, buying a first thing I buy with Bitcoin, car. And then you made another purchase with Bitcoin uh, this afternoon. Yeah, we uh, afterwards we uh, went downtown, had lunch, uh, got the tour of the uh, city of Keene, which is beautiful, by the way. And we went to a corner shop and uh, they accept Bitcoin there. They also sell silver. So I made my first silver purchase with Bitcoin. How much silver did you purchase? Hold it up for the webcam. We we do have two webcams here. So if you're listening on one of the affiliates other than the Liberty Radio Network, you can go to lrn.fm and view the webcam. I got a so quarter ounce of... Holding uh, that up, let me make sure that that's the right camera because we, ha- we have two. Uh, hold it up for the other camera there. So... You should be able to see. That is a beautiful piece of silver. Quarter ounce of uh, silver. Sons of Liberty Mint. And And uh, Sons of Liberty Mint is put out by Silver Dave and the Sons of Liberty Mint. And I don't know if Dave is actually a free stater, but he's definitely friendly with free staters. He's got a place up in Laconia, New Hampshire. So if you're... Visiting New Hampshire, I definitely recommend stopping in to see Dave and get some of his silver. I bought it for point uh, zero zero nine seven four Bitcoin. I don't feel like <laughs> doing math in my head, but that's roughly uh, five dollars. Uh, it's around that. Yeah, it was eight bucks there, so I'm assuming eight it's bucks. around eight. Yeah, it's about okay. right. Yeah, so it was it just the one piece that you got or that's you all i one? bought i just bought one i just wanted to buy some uh okay. buy silver so i could have bought more but yeah for the time being i just wanted to make my first purchase with bitcoin uh my well in a retail location right you know i've never bought anything at a retail location with bitcoin for, before so that's the first place I've ever been that actually accepted bitcoin so i had to take advantage of it yeah there there are actually i think five uh retail locations in Keene that accept bitcoin there's a bed and breakfast that's not too terribly far south of Keene. And one of the proprietors of that location made news in the Concord Monitor not too long ago, where the Concord Monitor put out an article where you can use Bitcoin, you know, like Bitcoin's catching on. 
and one of the people that's a Free State Project participant in Manchester, Neil Connor, was recently interviewed by a Fox News correspondent because he, too, is selling his car for Bitcoin. So, you know, I, I just think that this thing is going to catch on and take off, and I, I've called it the chariot before. Where, if you think about it, I, I don't yeah. think that Bitcoin is going to last forever, but a Bitcoin type currency it's definitely a, oh, will. it's the future. It's definitely the future. It's uh, you know, having a currency that's not controlled by any bank or any government is beauty, in my opinion. You know, and to sort of expand on the Bitcoin as a chariot analogy, without chariots. In, you know, like the ancient world, there would never have been wagons. There never would have been horseless carriages. So all of our modes of transportation can, you know, be traced directly back or indirectly back to the chariot. Yeah. So in 500 years or a thousand years or even 2000 years into the future, Whatever currencies are being used, I honestly believe, will be able to be traced back to Bitcoin. Yeah, I don't think Bitcoin lasts forever, but it will be uh, the transition that gets everyone off of uh, government-issued currency. Yeah, and there's an event going on down in Miami. Today's the last day of it, the Bitcoin Miami conference. And Mark Edge, who's one of the Free Talk Live co-hosts, told us last night on the show he called in from miami and he said there are thousands of people here and barely one year ago there was a bitcoin conference in san jose california that barely had 500 it's insane how big so just looking at the number of people attending the conference that has increased vastly in one year. Here's my question. What do you think it's going to be when Amazon starts accepting Bitcoin or Google starts accepting Bitcoin on their Play Store? It will be astronomical. And I've I've compared Bitcoin to PayPal in this sort of realm because think about when PayPal first started. Everybody was, well, what good is it? What can I do with it? You know, oh, I can send money to my friend. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. But can I actually buy things using this? And businesses started picking it up. And more businesses started picking it up. And more businesses started integrating it directly into their online shopping. And now PayPal is a pretty standard option for how to check out. So... I don't think it's going to be that long until using Bitcoin as a standard option for being able to check out from an online merchant. We're going to see Bitcoin accepted everywhere. Every website is going to accept Bitcoin because it's so easy for them to actually, you know, do that. And w- there's no real risk for them because you can know, I know, uh, what was it, uh, Coinbase, when they did uh, um, uh, Overstock, they were actually converting they offer the service where it converts straight to uh, dollars anyway. So even yes. for them to accept it, they're not really taking any risk. They're taking money, and it gets converted to whatever they need uh, automatically through Coinbase or a different and company. I, I'm glad you mentioned Coinbase because one of the beautiful things about Coinbase, they don't charge a per-transaction fee on the first million dollars worth of business. Yeah. So for Overstock, you know, obviously Overstock has already hit that million dollars or is nearing that million dollar mark. But for the corner shop where you purchase the silver, it's going to take a long time before they hit the million dollar mark on transactions and have to start paying a transaction fee. Yeah, and who knows how much those Bitcoins will be worth if they actually are key. I don't know what they're doing at that location. They might be holding on to the Bitcoins or they might I, be converting it. I believe it. she is. Okay. Stay tuned to Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. Robert, if you want to stay on for another segment, you are free to do I'll so. I'll stay on. This is Peace, Love, Liberty Radio online at fppradio.com.
Welcome back to Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. Online at fppradio.com. And you heard us talk about Bitcoin. And if you have a business that you would like to get set up to accept Bitcoin, I highly recommend Coinbase. I already mentioned they have no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of sales that you do or the first million dollars worth of transactions that you do as your business. They do have slight transaction fees when you convert from Bitcoin to U.S. dollars or euro or whichever currency it is that you wish to convert to. And the beautiful thing is they connect directly to your bank account. So you don't have one of these long waits of waiting on a check. You just have the standard like three, four days for something to clear going into your bank. So if you want to get set up with Coinbase, I would ask that you go through my affiliate link, which is coinbase.fpp.cc. That will get you set up and... If you do get set up and you do over $100 worth of business buying, selling Bitcoin, then as sort of a reward for me sending you to them, they will give me $5. And again, no transaction fees on the first million dollars worth of business that you do using Coinbase. So there's really no risk and you're not going to be spending the money that you do on credit card transactions. Again, that's coinbase.fpp.cc. So I've got Robert Mathias, who is known as the Voluntarist Rebel on YouTube. And about a week ago, no, actually, I'm looking at the dates. It was 10 days ago. That you posted a video online titled, I'm moving to New Hampshire for the Free State Project. Yes, I did. So how long ago was it that you actually signed the statement of intent? I signed the intent, I want to say February of last year. So my goal was to get here within one year of signing. So I'm making it by like a week. That is just incredible. Yeah. Because it took me several years to get here after I signed the statement of intent. And that that was a really interesting journey that I took over the, I think, two and a half, three years that it took to get me here from, I think, South Carolina at the time. I had intended to move here in 2010 and then had a couple of offers for things and went to Missouri and then from Missouri to Sedona and then from Arizona to Texas was in Texas for a little over a year and then moved here. It will be two years ago in April. Okay. When I moved. So that, that journey, I, I really loved the journey that brought me here from South Carolina. I feel like I'm starting my journey right now. You know, I I think that even though you might think that you're just now beginning the journey, I I think that everybody's journey begins when they're born. Yeah. And I I know that that's cliche, but there are so many things that happen early in life and then later in life to get you to the point to where you make the decision, I want to move to New Hampshire from Chicago. Oh, it was a huge – I mean, it took – I've been going down the rabbit hole, you know, about six years now, but, um, you know, all that kind of led up to me being here. So I kind of feel like that was like my past life. Like those years, like it was, uh, research and like just enlightenment and just getting to the the philosophy of Liberty to the point where I want to be here. Um, and then once I'm here now, I feel like this is now a whole new chapter. Everything is different. Right. So I guess, uh, the image that came to my mind when you were talking about, you know, the journey over the last six years, sort of being lost in the wilderness, fighting through the wilderness to find the path. Yes. Um, it's a lot of people don't understand it. They don't understand the philosophy of liberty and just trying to get to that point even uh, was a struggle with a lot of, you know, a lot of people always fight you along the way. And uh, you just got to be true to yourself and believe, you know, what is right. And that's how I got here. Just keep going, kept uh 
finding anything I can on information on what Liberty is. And I finally found the Free State Project. And I, as soon as I uh, read about it, I knew that's what's it. So was there one specific issue that really started you to look into liberty a little bit more? Um, Some did, people, there, there's like a, a red specific, pill, like a red pill that really set my course to where for me, it began when I was in high school slash college. I saw a documentary about the history of drugs in America. Okay. And, you know, growing up in Alabama, being told drugs are bad, okay, and then saying, wait a second, these things weren't always illegal. I was always under the impression that from, you know, like the beginning of time, you don't smoke cannabis, there's a law against it. Well, no, it wasn't until the early 1900s, and then you could still get it, but you had to pay a tax on it. And then the courts ruled that paying the tax was a violation of your Fifth Amendment rights to not have to incriminate yourself. And it's one of these things that, you know, long story short, everything became illegal except for alcohol and tobacco. Because even prescriptions, if you, you know, if you have a prescription and on the bottle it says your prescription expired January twelfth, twenty fourteen, and it's January thirteenth. You can go to jail. Yeah. So well, well for me, the, the drug war aspect is really what got me started. I come from a completely different uh, area. I am a uh, I my red pill that what set my me on my course watching loose change. Um, I went down though for a couple of years. I went down the truth or movement side, like. And I don't know, for me, I got to the point where I can only find out so much that the government's evil. You know, you get to the point where, like, you know it's evil. Like, I've had so much proof. You know, I went down the Truth or Movement, Alex Jones documentary, stuff like that. Listen to Alex Jones. And uh, I know a lot of people rip up Alex Jones. I'm not, like, a huge supporter anymore. But he introduced me to, like, a lot of different ideas. Like, he would have Ron Paul on, you know, Lou Rockwell uh, Stefan Molyneux, Adam Kokesh, stuff like that. And like that kind of introduced me to all these different ideas. And then from all those, I kind of like searched out. And that's how like I found like uh, Free Keen and the Free State Project, Pork Fest, and all that stuff that kind of went with that. And just from there, it just kept going down and down. My major issue with Alex Jones, it's not so much that he's a constitutionalist. While people promote him as, like, the great libertarian I, savior. I have a theory on Alex Jones, by the way. My major issue with Alex Jones is that he thrives on fear. Yes. He wants people to be afraid. He's been doing the whole, the globalist, since forever, it seems. Yeah. You know, it was, what, like the late 90s, early 2000s, when he really came on the scene as the globalist, George Bush, blah, blah, blah. And now that it's Obama, Obama and the globalist. Robert, do you want to hang on for one more segment? Because I, I think that this is a. Yeah, I, I, I really want to tell you my theory of Alex Jones. Into. Stay tuned. This is Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. Robert Matthias is going to tell you his theory on Alex Jones. Where is it, Bill Hicks? Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, online at ftpradio.com. That website, ftpradio.com, lists all of the days and times that the show airs when it's scheduled. There are some outlets in which the show runs, but it is not on the schedule, but those are listed as well, at least all of the outlets that I am aware of. And in case you're curious, when the show is live, it's every Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern, and it originates on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. The show is aired simulcast on Daily Poll Radio and Freedom Phalanx Radio Network. So regardless of which outlet you are listening to, I do thank you for listening to the show. Robert Matthias, the voluntarist rebel, is my guest for the hour. It 
started off, I wanted to talk to you just about the car sale that we did this morning where you bought my 2006 Nissan Sentra using Bitcoin. Yes. And then it turned into, let's talk to Robert about all kinds of things, including your theory about Alex Jones. And I don't know if your theory is that Alex Jones and Bill Hicks are the same person. He's not. Because I've seen that theory floating around. So what is your theory about Alex Jones? I think he knows he's a transitional um, personality. I think there's multiple personalities within the liberty movement where, like, it's stepping stones down to, you know, what uh, the non-aggression principle and stuff like that. Um, I think Alex Jones knows he's that transitional person, and that's why he purposely has guests on his uh, radio show that are, you know, very liberty-minded like Tom Woods or Lou Rockwell, even Stefan Malin is an unregular guest on Alex Jones nowadays. So, like, I really think he knows that he is a transitional person, and he knows his audience. And I think, I think personally that some of the stuff he does is to placate to his, you know, my constitution uh, people. But at the same time, he's introducing those people to uh, the philosophy of liberty. And honestly, I came from those people. And if it was for Alex Jones introducing me to all these other people, I wouldn't have been here. I listened to Alex Jones a little bit after I was already, you know, what I would consider to be an activist. Okay. And it was only because I saw a couple of the 9-11 conspiracy movies, and there are just so many unanswered questions, not only about 9-11, but also the Kennedy assassination, the USS Cole bombing, Hell, even the USS Maine and USS Liberty, uh, USS Liberty and uh, Sumter, Fort Sumter, because growing up in Alabama, you know, obviously I would get the, you know, losers side of history regarding the American war against independence. We all lost in that war. And I, I'm glad you said that. Uh but the history that I was told was nobody really knows who fired the first shot because the Confederate generals claimed that they were fired on first and fired in retaliation. The Union generals say, no, Fort Sumter was fired on first. So it's one of those things of nobody really knows, just like uh, the Boston Massacre. And we only know what really happened at the Boston Massacre because the United States eventually won independence from Great Britain. And as they say, the winners write history. Exactly. And since John Adams, who defended the British soldiers during that trial, went on to become one of the U.S. presidents, he therefore was one of the winners to make sure that the actual events were recorded. To where the person yelling fire was not one of the British officers. It was one of the colonists who was standing behind the British troops. So it, it was one of those things of somebody thought they heard their officer say something. And it turned out, no, it actually wasn't the officer. So, you know, the sort of conspiracies go all the way back to the founding of the country. Well, there's always comp uh, conspiracies. There's conspiracies for everything. You know, um, I try not to go down the conspiracy route anymore. I did that. I'm done with that. Like, I know what the philosophy of liberty is, and I don't need, you know, I know that I know people that have authority over me aren't using it correctly, and they shouldn't have it to begin with. Right. And uh, that's all I really need to know. Like, whether, like, there's a cons grand conspiracy to do this or that, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. It is what it is, what's right here, right now. The first time I actually heard an Alex Jones show or watched an Alex Jones documentary, it reminded me of Coast to Coast. Yes. Only with a slight Liberty slant. It's Coast to Coast without uh, UFOs. I wouldn't even say or it's ghosts. without the UFOs. <laughs> because I, I've seen some stuff from Alex. And not well, necessarily no, no, no. You replaced, you replaced, talking about you replaced UFOs. the UFOs with chemtrails. I'm glad you brought that up because that's where I was going. Okay. Where Alex Jones was talking to some guy that was like an Air Force pilot 
the only American soldier who is on record in official government records as having done weather modification studies. And this guy was saying, oh, yeah, well, if we seed the clouds this way, then we can prevent a hurricane. And if we seed it this way, we can create a hurricane. And Alex Jones said, well, if you can make the hurricanes go away, why is the government not doing this? And my first thought was, wait a second. If they were doing this and you knew they were doing this, you would be yelling the other thing of, they're doing this and I've got all the documents. He never really seems to release those documents that often either. Sometimes the, he, there's the a couple he has. Generally linked to other websites on Prison Planet to where he's written a report on something and he links to that from another Prison Planet website or another Prison Planet article. So he, he's one of these, like, he documents to himself all the time. Yeah. And he gives very misleading headlines. I'll give him credit, though. He's entertaining. He's a very entertaining radio personality. I don't listen to him pretty much anymore at he all. He can be entertaining. Yeah. Like I said, I, I view him as a transitional he person. He can also be very, very annoying. Oh, he is. He, he's got this yeah. video about the clockwork elves claiming that everybody, yes. <laughs> everybody that has ever taken DMT sees the clockwork elves, and the clockwork elves tell you to kill people and build things. He, he also thinks I've juice. spoken to several people who have taken DMT, and none of them know what the hell he's talking about. Didn't he put out a video where he, th he thought uh, juice boxes are making every uh, guy gay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, juice boxes are making people <laughs> gay. Why do I give these to my kids? Why am I drinking one right now? It's like, okay, what, why would that be the thing? Like, oh, I, yeah, I defended Alex Jones at that part. To make people gay. I'm just saying that he was, for me, he was a transitional person and like he does introduce his audience to some liberty. So that's my conspiracy theory that he, some, some liberty stuff, some stuff. Yeah. He, well, you know what? Some people aren't there yet. You know, some, everyone's on their own level of philosophy. Right. You know, you just can't go straight to it automatically. You have to almost search it out yourself. You do. But there there are a lot of people, because he can be entertaining, a lot of people get stuck at the Alex Jones level. Yes. They which, do. There that is a rut. That's a that's a problem. There is the Alex Jones rut where they get to the Alex Jones part but they don't keep going. They just stop right there. Yeah. And I saw a video where he was talking about a Hulu advertisement where some actor guy, I don't remember who it was, one of the Baldwins maybe, there's like a billion Baldwins that are actors, uh, one of them says, you know, like, television doesn't kill the brain, it just makes it mushy, and that makes it easier for us to eat, because we're aliens. And so Alex Jones was saying, see, they're putting this out, they're telling you that they're aliens, and nobody's <laughs> going to believe them. It's all because the fluoride in the water. Yeah, so stay tuned to Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. Robert, you're welcome to stay on for the final segment of the first hour. Why not? It's up to you. Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, online at fppradio.com. Fluoride, aliens, do they exist? I don't know. I don't think anybody does. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, online at fppradio.com. And we've been talking a good bit this hour about Bitcoin. And if you want to find some places that you can use Bitcoin, well, let me recommend that you head on over to shop.fpp.cc. That is my online web store. You can use Bitcoin there on the online web store, or you can link over to some places that do accept Bitcoin, including Amagi Metals, where you can purchase gold and silver. They even carry the Sons of Liberty Mint silver that Robert mentioned purchasing earlier, using Bitcoin at a physical location. So head over to shop.fpp.cc. You can still use your you know, U.S. dollars or euro if you have them through Amazon. There is an Amazon shopping iframe built directly into the page. 
or you can click any of the links for my affiliate links or click Bitcoin shop and that takes you to my Bitcoin store. Again, that is all at shop.fpp.cc. So, Robert, we sort of went off on a tangent about conspiracies about Alex Jones. Yes. Now, I'm sure you've seen the theory that Alex Jones and Bill Hicks are the same person. I have seen that, yes. What are your thoughts on that? Striking resemblance? I mean, it's it's. They're both from Texas. Here, here's here's my thing. I Bill Hicks went away right around the time that Alex Jones came into prominence. Coming from for me, I'll be honest. Coming from that whole conspiracy side at one point in my life, I find conspiracy theories now entertaining. I don't care if they're true. The more fantastical, the better, because it's entertainment for me. So what about lizard people? Is that one? That, have you have you heard the? Um, did, did you ever believe that one, or was that always just sort of entertainment to you? Kind of entertainment. Um, did you ever see the um, Louis C.K. Uh, where he got the um, Rumsfeld was on? He was on a re- open Anthony, and they had Don- Donald Rumsfeld on, and for literally twenty minute interview, he kept asking uh, if he's a lizard person. <laughs> I Great. Watch it. That. Watch it. It is fantastic. I did not see that. Never so, answers. Never answers. What is in f- store for Robert Matthias now that you are in New Hampshire? I, I know that you still need to you know, get settled in in a lot of ways, but you already have employment. You already have an apartment, and now you have transportation. Yes. So... Uh, do you plan on doing more YouTube videos? I plan to make as many as I can. I want to document what's going on here because, in all honesty, I view what's going on in the uh, Free Save Project as history in the making, and I want to just be here and to document it. At some point, uh, I had started up a show with Joel Valenzuela called uh, Rebel Love Show. Um, I want to bring that back. Uh, I kind of want to do uh, – because, in all honesty, Keen, like owns media – uh, and I kind of want to document more stuff what's going on out uh, on the eastern side of uh, New Hampshire. But I also want to cover everything going on. I want to come back here. I want to go to Concord. I kind of want to explore the state and just document what's going on. There have been several people who have suggested that there should be sort of a Liberty-themed reality show. I would love that. Is that something in line with what you're planning on doing? I don't have the the funds or the capabilities to do something like that. That's hugely over the top. Um, but I would love to get to the point where you know a lot of us are like recording almost our entire day, and somebody making a either documentary or reality TV show from that because all of us have cameras. There's no reason why we can't record and what's going on, and that would make a great reality TV show, which bring even more people here because they want to see what's going on. So. Uh, I, I'm guessing I'm a little confused on what you mean by document everything, I, but not I, have it be as a reality show type event. I work full time, so I, you know this is like you know I'm not going to be able to do like I have to go. I have a day job, you know, I have to go right. to. Um, so like for me, I don't really have the capability to do like a reality show, but I do want to record my interactions just going throughout the Free State Project as much as I can. And any kind of events going on or any uh, civil disobedience or whatever it might be, I really want to record well, that. Those are the interesting things that would wind up actually making it into a reality show so, anyway. If someone wants to take clips that I upload and put it onto like some sort of like blend of a reality show, I'm fine with that. So uh, you had mentioned Concord, which is the capital of New Hampshire, do you intend to do any sort of legislative testimony? Is that something that interests you at all? Uh, I'm I'm interested in kind of going the whole gambit. I kind of want to get my feet wet and everything. That's kind of my goal. I just want to experience all the different type of activism going on here and kind of like take it all in and record it all. Well, you did move at the right time for being able to record what goes on in Concord. Because the legislature is actually in session now until, I believe, late May. And then they're off again until January. So you definitely are here at the right time to go see some testimony and record. There were some interesting hearings last week and the previous week. 
I don't remember which day it was or even which week because I've been to Concord so many times in the mm-hmm. last couple of weeks. But there was an anti-NDAA hearing before the Senate – or not the Senate, the uh, House Committee on State and Federal Relations. And someone recorded that entire committee hearing. There was a wiretap hearing – and somebody recorded – actually, I think a couple somebodies recorded that entire thing. And there were so many other hearings going on that, yeah, you could go any Tuesday or Thursday. You can go to the legislative building, walk into one of the rooms, and you will find a hearing going on. It might not be the most interesting hearing, but there's definitely going to be a hearing. Yeah. And you could record that. And if you are so inclined, you can fill out a little slip of paper that says, I would like to speak on this bill and hand it in. And as long as it's not one of the hearings where the entire room is full of people wanting to speak, you'll get called on fairly quickly. Really? So it is very easy to speak on bills before a legislative committee here in New Hampshire. Wow. I didn't even know that. It's like news to me. I, I didn't know it was that easy to uh, just go and record and even be like yes. actually speak oh, at a hearing. Right. That's because I, I, you're I from been Illinois. There yet. I'm from Illinois. And you're not allowed to use a camera anywhere in the state unless you have 50 pages of signed documentation from everybody that is in camera shop. Only free men can actually press a button on their phone to record. <laughs> you know, they, they say that the... Camera is the new gun. I, I get that. And there's the old saying that the pen is mightier than the sword. I would say that the camera is mightier I, than I would the gun. Agree. I would completely agree. Because, as has been said multiple times, not necessarily on this show, but in other places, the camera does give an objective record of what happens. So if you get pulled over by the police, pull out a camera. Almost well, even, everybody has one of these things called a smartphone now that has a camera yeah, built into it. Even if it's a crappy it. camera, you're still going to get, you know, you're still going to be able to document it. And in all honesty, for me, I'd like to be able to document my life just for my personal benefit. Like I would like to be able to document as much as I can just so I, you know, I can always go back and see what I was doing or whatnot, but for uh, reliability's sake, but just for my own personal, like it's what I want to do. I'm living. I should be able to record my interactions with anyone. Yeah. So. Definitely, I encourage you, if the legislative stuff is something that interests you, head up to Concord on a Tuesday or a Thursday during legislative hearings. Okay. And now the Senate is also having hearings, so you could go to Senate hearings or House hearings. On Wednesday is the day that the legislature actually does all of the horrible things that they do. Although in New Hampshire, they're a lot better than in other places. Yeah. But they still occasionally do some horrible things. One of which I documented last week on my Facebook where I posted everybody that voted against a mandatory drug test for hospital workers. Because apparently there was something that happened last year to where somebody that worked at a hospital was stealing some of the drugs from the hospital. So instead of the hospital, you know, getting stricter on their policy of, you know, you can't take things without all of these papers. Nope. Now we're going to use the legislature to force everybody that works at a hospital to get a drug test. That's horrible. Everybody from, you know, hospital workers themselves to well, heaven the for- janitor. He- heaven forbid someone smokes pot on their night off. Yeah. Stay tuned to Peace, Love, Liberty Radio. I've got Mark Victor coming up next hour. This is Peace, Love, Liberty Radio online at fppradio.com.